we knew about his background and his history and what he is known for, and that is discrimination, disrespect for African Americans. Mr. Speaker, my position against this president and his administration is clear. I oppose this president. I do not honor this president. I do not respect this president. He has disrespected, disrespected the office and offended so many people across this country and around the world with his disgusting and indecent rhetoric against women, the black community, Muslims, immigrants, and disabled Americans. Mr. Speaker, it is not just the African-American community who will lose under this president. It is everyone who isn't a millionaire or billionaire that stands to lose under this administration. I will continue to oppose him and fight him every step of the way. And while I'm talking about where he has put his priorities, and of course, I think the budget really does reflect your priorities. He's reduced the education budget by 13%, $9 billion less than last year, $168 billion increase for charter schools, 50% above current levels. Let's take a look at labor. Reduces the budget by 21%, $2.5 billion decrease from last year. Health and Human Services decreased funding by $15 billion, the lowest in 20 years, reducing funding for the National Institute of Health by 19%. Environmental Protection Agency, reduces the budget by 31 percent, from 8.1 million to 5.7 billion. I'm sorry, 8.1 billion to 5.7 billion. Housing and urban development again, budget by just about 6 billion, 13.2 percent. Claims he cares about small business reduces SBA budget by 5 percent, 43.2 billion less than last year. And it goes on and on and on. Homeland Security increases the budget by only 6.8% to $44 billion, even though he claims that he cares a lot about the security of this country. What am I saying? I'm simply saying that African Americans have struggled and fought historically. Many African Americans have paid a huge price fighting for justice and equality in this country, have died for it. I don't have to call the names of Martin Luther King and all of the others. We have paid a price, we have fought, but guess what? Despite the fact that America has not always been there for us, we have always been there for America. We have fought in America's wars, we have suffered discrimination, we have dis We've suffered isolation and undermining, but we stand up for America, oftentimes when others who think they are more patriotic, who say they are more patriotic, do not. When we fight against this president and we point out how dangerous he is for this society and for this country, we're fighting for the democracy. We're fighting for America. We're saying to those who say they're patriotic, but they turned a blind eye to the destruction that he's about to, to cause this country. You're not nearly as patriotic as we are. We not only have fought in America's wars, have stood up for America, have been there whenever this, this country was threatened in any way. And we say now that this country is threatened with a president who does not belong there, a president who does not know how this government works, a president who goes down to Mar-a-Lago every weekend and plays golf. He's not huddling with the members of Congress and trying to figure out how to form a consensus, but rather he thought he could come in here and run roughshod over everybody. But that's how he works. That's how he acts. He's not good for America. African Americans know this.